Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And we are back with another very interesting question from the Q&A section in the comment section of our YouTube channel. So, one of the most frequently asked questions is, will relocating to a different country change my destiny? Now, will my life just magically turn out, you know, if I just change my address? So, this is asked by people who want to move to a developed country or sometimes within big countries uh, like uh, from India example, like somebody from uh, West Bengal is asking, you know, should I move to North India or somebody from Gujarat is asking, should I go to Bangalore or somebody from South is asking, should I go to Gurgaon or something like this, okay. Gurgaon or Gurugram, sorry. <laughs> So, we have people who want to move from states, uh, interstates or within different countries. So, does it actually happen that if you uh, change a particular place, uh, then magically things happen? Well, in my opinion, uh, actually there's, it's not my opinion, it's basic philosophy of the Vedas is that the karma does not change. You, you cannot change karma just by uh, changing places, okay? So if you change a country or change a place, it doesn't mean you know your karma is going to change and you 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 your things will just magically work out and fall in place. It doesn't work. Nor does it mean if you change a country, things will suddenly collapse. Okay. So what what we need to understand that at a fundamental level, the amount of pleasure and suffering that we are destined to get. That's not going to change. That's what is the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita. So that is something which we have to be uh, very well aware of before we uh, ask such questions. Okay, But nonetheless, using astrology, we can identify certain uh, patterns in a horoscope which can tell us if um, it can be relatively easier for us to you know, capitalize different opportunities if we go abroad. Um, or um, should we stay in our homeland or whatever, or should we go to an uh, underdeveloped country, um, or should we change a state within the same country. Okay, So there are certain parameters which we can use using astrology, but keeping into consideration the fact that the karma will not change. So, so suppose, for example, this means if a person has certain opportunities in a foreign land, so if a person from India goes to uh, America, then maybe the person can have better opportunities. But suppose that time the person has a bad dasha, then he will also lose money there or you know have problems there. So just because he has gone, it doesn't mean he will not have problems. Okay, I'm saying this again and again because it's very important because this is fundamental before you do any analysis. Okay, and then we go to astrology. So. Now our task is to find out when a client comes to us for a consultation. It's important that we try to find what actually is the sphere of this person's life. What's like the uh, energy of this chart. So, for example, we have to use different parameters to judge uh, the comprehensive flow of the horoscope. It's like the comprehensive analysis. So, if we see uh, certain parameters like primary parameters, like for example, the Lagna Lord, then we have the Sun, then we have Moon. So we have to see what's going on with these three planets. And then we see what's going on in the 10th house or the 10, with the 10th Lord. Because sometimes what I've seen is if the Lagna Lord is uh, involved with the 12th house, somehow the person does not end up staying uh, in the birth country somehow. I have, I have seen this. Not always, but in most of the cases, in 60, 70, 75% of the cases I have seen. That the person somehow either naturally ends up going abroad. Now, which country that we will uh, decide in, in some time, discuss in some time. Uh, or um, the person goes to a different state, but primarily I have seen it's not just a state within the country. It's a different uh, country altogether. Now, if the person has the Lagna Lord connected to the ninth house, then either the person can go to a foreign country or the likelihood is more the person may change a state within the same country. And if the person has Lagna Lord connected with the third, 
then it is possible that the person may stay within the same state uh, but move to a different town or city. Now here it is very important to understand what do you mean by a different country or a different state. It's very important we understand it. It's not just geographically. So whenever we say that this person will go abroad to a foreign country, it means that he will go to a place where there are three things which are totally different from his current country, which is uh, the food, the language and the clothing. Basically, it's culture, right? All these three are different. So, if we go now, for example, if you uh, if a person is in uh, Amritsar, Punjab, and he says, you know, oh, I I have gone to Lahore, Pakistan, for example. So, uh, technically, it's a different country, right? Um, but is it because Lahore and Amritsar they are both parts of Punjab, right? It was undivided Punjab before the independence of India in 1947. So. Uh, does it really make sense that we say, oh, this person has gone to a different country because their the language is the same, Punjabi. Of course, now in Pakistan, they have uh, superimposed Urdu on all other languages, of course. Uh, so you might say, okay, there's some difference. But still, you know, I have many friends from uh, Punjab uh, part of Pakistan and they might speak Urdu, but when you hear their tone, you understand, and they, they are full, they're like full on Punjabis. They, they, are, they are not uh, Urdu speaking people. Uh, so the language is almost the same. Then food is very similar. And then we have uh, the clothing, which is again very similar. Okay. Now, of course, if you go to different parts of Pakistan, you know, then uh, things may be different. Uh, but now suppose a, India, a person from Sri Lanka comes to India, to Tamil Nadu or you know, whatever, some, some other state, primarily to Tamil Nadu in South, South India. So the clothing uh, may be a bit different. The food is 70 to 80 percent. It will be very similar, uh, maybe not 100 percent. And the language, they most of them may speak Tamil, right? So, in essence, we have to understand that this is not necessarily geographically because uh, today you may say, like, if you go back 100 years or 75, 80 years, then India and Pakistan were one country, but now they are different. Uh, but um, hypothetically, maybe after a thousand years, they again merge and become one country, suppose. So, then what happens? Does astrological predictions change? No, the principles remain same. So wherever the language, food and clothing is different. Now, if a person goes from uh, India, suppose the person goes uh, to Afghanistan. Okay, So then uh, there may be some difference because uh, Afghanistan's culture is a bit similar to India, but there's quite a lot of difference. Okay, And within India also it depends. Uh, what religion this person is in, what language does he speak, you know, so so it depends. Now, on the other side, if if a person from uh, Punjab goes to uh, Tamil Nadu, for example, now, is it a same country or a different country, right? Because uh, it, it all belongs to India, but the thing is, uh, Punjabi food and South Indian, Tamilian food is very different. I mean, it's like, there's no comparison. I mean, the very different kind of you know foods. So food stuffs you get most sometimes. You know, um, I mean, it's very different, very 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 different. Okay, and sometimes they may say, "Oh, I like Punjabi food. I don't like Punjabi food." Or somebody may say, "I I like uh, Tamilian food. I don't like Tamilian food." Right. So, and what about the uh, language? I mean, totally different, right? And what about the clothing? Uh, Maybe similar because it's Indian uh, Vedic tradition, but still quite different. Okay, but now Im imagine a person from uh, USA goes to Canada. I mean, almost the same. They're very similar, right? Seven, eight, seventy, eighty percent. It's similar. So, whenever you see twelfth house, you will understand that the person will have drastic differences in the language, food, and clothing. Drastic. It's like super duper duper bumper drastic. And ninth house will also give drastic differences, but with the cultural ethos may be a bit similar. Okay, and third house will give you know some language barrier or something like this. You know? It's like in Assam, like I'm from Assam. So if you go upper Assam, lower Assam, it's like they have a different accent. So 
it, it might be something like that, but the, all are SMEs, right? So then it doesn't make much difference. A person from lower Assam can easily understand what a person from upper Assam is speaking and vice versa. So therefore, whenever you are advising someone, then you have to take this into consideration. Now comes the dasha. So if the dasha of a natural benefit is going on, who are the natural benefits? We have Jupiter, uh, we have Moon, Mercury, Venus. They are natural benefits. Okay. Now I know you will say, oh, but Moon and Mercury, you know, they are conditional benefits. But let's, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume they are always benefit. So if you are running dashas of these planets, then it is possible to some extent that you might end up going to a developed country. Okay, now developed country again is not by, you know, as per definition of the West or the United Nations or whatever. It, it, it basically means you might be in a place where there are a lot of opportunities, you know, then uh, it doesn't mean that there are no problems or there is no crime, but things are a bit settled and things are like, things happen o over the course of time. It, it, that's how you can say it's like a developed country. Like, for example, if the bus is supposed to come at 322 it comes at 322 or 325 around but it doesn't come at 422 right <laughs> now recently i was in india for three months and i took the uh, this uh, the rails to travel in north india and i was astonished to see the punctuality i was like my god this is mind-blowing you know great job indian railways thumbs up to indian railways and uh, most mostly they were on time okay so now of course that doesn't mean india has become a developed country but maybe in another 20 25 years or at, at least in 50 years maybe um, india will reach back to the status which it was uh, before uh, the british came which was like sone ki chidiya as we say right <clears throat> if india keeps progressing the way it is now of course conditions apply so then we go to the date of birth. So here the numerology is very important. So if in your date of birth you have the number 7. So suppose uh, you you are born on 17th or you are born on 7th. You are born in July or 1987, 77, 67, 57, something like this. Or your basic is 7. Basic means the day alone. So you are born on 16th. Then also it is 7. Or case number three the most powerful your destiny number is seven which is the total sum of your date of birth okay then your probability of going to a developed country is very very high but the but the thing here with seven is uh, if you have seven too many times like for example you were born on 7th july 1997 the more uh oops this mic has changed yeah, so uh, the more you have seven, uh, more than once, the more it becomes difficult to go to a developed country. So if you have seven only once, then it is very good. Uh, if you have two times, it is okay. So if you were born on 7 July, that's still fine. But if it is like, you know, uh, you have, you're born on 7th July and then maybe it's again 1977, it's like four times seven, you know, <laughs> then it can be relatively difficult. And on the contrary, if you have the number 4 in your date of birth, uh, then it is more likely. So, for example, you are born on uh, 4th or April or 1994 or your basic is 4 like you are born either on 4th, 13th or 22nd or your destiny is 4, so the sum of your date of birth. And you do not have 7. Okay, So, suppose you, you are born on 4th of July. So, then you have 4 and 7 but I am saying where you do not have 7 at all. Okay. So, uh, in that case, uh, you can still go to a developed country, but you need very good dashas to go. And uh, in that case, you will, uh, you might also have some problems after you go there, okay, if 4 comes. But 4 will help you to go in countries like, you know, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Emirates and all this, like, places where there is uh, lack of freedom and, you know, like, things are not as uh, good as it should be uh, maybe financially it's good but there is a lot of restriction in these gulf countries right i mean uh, especially in terms of religion there's a lot of restriction 
but compared to that you know if you go to the west uh, i mean to america europe and canada australia and all this you will feel that there is relatively more freedom in that case you know you can practice whatever you like <clears throat> and because of industrial revolution in the last 2 300 years they they have developed quite well and of course with the world war crap and all this of course so uh, then then you know that this person uh, with four may go but uh, with some problems or the person may go as a refugee or may seek asylum in a developed country or the person may go on a spouse visa dependent visa okay so if you have four then you will need some additional support additional money will be required uh, additional uh, resources will be required actually okay and four is also the number of unseen problems you know weird things happening in life so then after you go maybe in worst case you will stay but you will not get a resident permit or to get a pr it will be difficult all right so if you have seven then it's very good so if you have destiny seven excellent okay but if you have seven too many times unless it is destiny number then it can be problematic okay uh and along with so if somebody has destiny 7 then it is like a quag you tell him he is asking you oh will i get admission in this country you know, like america or whatever you know some other developed country as per today's standards well just put it and you go unless you have a very 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 bad dasha okay now uh, but if you have like 4 and 7 then you have to see what dasha this person is running you know the dasha has to be good only then the person can go because now the person also has four and if the person only has four without seven then the person really has to have a very good dasha only then this can happen okay <clears throat> but of course this also depends on the chart and so many other factors and then especially if you see uh, the 10th house if you see the 12th lord is in the 10th or 10th lord is in a 12 then you will actually understand that may or may not be that the person will want to stay abroad or will go abroad but somehow in terms of profession for profession the person will somehow end up going abroad when the dasha comes okay so not not in general always okay but but when the dasha comes only then that can happen and if the ninth lord is also in the 10th or ninth lord is in 12th and you know 12th lord is in the 10th so some some kind of exchanges occurring between 9th 10th and 12th and 3rd then it can definitely happen the probability is much higher Uh, so the person will go abroad but for that we need to check the dashas and if the dashas are of natural malefics like saturn rahu ketu okay then the person may end up going to like uh, third world countries also i mean as per today's standards okay and adding to that if the person has four in date over then it makes matters even worse okay so uh, this is how you can understand but fundamentally you have to understand that at a karmic level again i am just repeating things won't change okay but using astrology we see when will the where will the person get good opportunity so uh, i would say the summary of this video is wherever you get good opportunities you should capitalize on that so just because you have uh 10th lord in 12th it doesn't mean you should all all you you should think oh i will only succeed if i go abroad it doesn't mean that okay and on the contrary we know the second and fourth houses they keep you in the family settings and in the homeland so if your 10th lord is connected to second or fourth house then maybe chances are higher that you end up staying in your same uh, culture and same country same domain and same food style same dressing sense so it it depends and you will never find a horoscope where your 10th lord is somewhere sometimes your 10th lord is in the 5th house so it's neither saying yes to abroad nor nor it is saying yes to homeland so what what happens you know so you have to see the dashas what what is going on if the dashas are indicating second or fourth then the person will stay uh, but if uh, the dashas are indicating the 9th or the 12th uh, then uh, maybe most likely the person will end up going abroad but again you will also never find where things are like so black and white like this you know third lord in ninth ninth lord in 12 you will not find such charts you may find them but again in the dashas you will see you know no dasha is indicating so will he go or not right so you you have to do a detailed analysis and you have to see the nature of the dasha planets and the date of birth so then you will understand actually 
uh, if this person will go abroad and will things how will things be there okay thank you very much for your patience if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation for me my website is also down below god is there with you all the time irrespective of which country you go just look to him and you'll find him thank you